Welcome to the CES meeting. Uh, today we have Nicolo for an update on uh, a presentation that I believe uh, Guy Bedford uh, or the idea that Guy Bedford has for a minimum viable module source. Nicolo, please take. Go ahead. Uh, yes, yes. Give me one second. Okay, uh, so like this is about the import source reflection proposal uh, that like, like allows like a very short summary that gives some syntax uh, for ah. import statements that allow importing what is considered the source of a given module. And right now in the proposal, the source is like completely host defined, like there is uh, because we don't have a concept of source yet. And like, even if we had a concept of source, like the source is very dependent on like what type of model it is. So for example, for WebAssembly models, the source would be a WebAssembly.module object. And for JavaScript models, the source would be the uh, module source constructor introduced by the like compartments here zero proposal. And the champions of this proposal received some feedback that like ECMAScript syntax should not give access to like a completely arbitrary uh, host object. And like the way Guy was thinking of solving this, and I can now share, share uh, this with you, share it in the chat. It's like define a base class for all the possible model sources. And this base class is defined within ECMAT 6.2. And there will be a requirement that hosts cannot like expose arbitrary objects as model sources, but they all have to extend from this base class. And this means that like this is like an intersection point between the like this proposal and the layer zero and the compartments layer zero proposal, because like well, this obviously means that the compartments layer zero proposal has to be updated to have this, like, so that the JavaScript model source inherits from this shared base class uh, that got called abstract model source. And yeah, and like, so like then the gist goes a little bit more in details and like I think Guy will explain them better. But like if you have any question regarding this quick introduction, uh, like Guy already presented his document to me yesterday, so I can probably answer to some questions. And there is some uh like I asked Guy like if if there were any like concerns regarding web compat for updating the WebAssembly model class to extend this base class. Uh, apparently Guy already talked about this with uh, people on the WebAssembly like web integration. And like they think that this is like safe enough, even if WebAssembly module is already like already has been already shipping for years. Uh, so if I have questions just about uh, kind of exploring this and testing it out, um, is that something I should ask in, uh, is it element, uh, the chat, or, or where would be the best place to? Just go, go ahead and ask here. I, I don't yeah I don't have any any now I'm just saying oh that, I see uh, after this meeting okay, guys here now uh, guy I just introduced the motivation for this for this document and the basic idea in this document thanks Nicolo uh, yeah sir I can make the beginning of the meeting um, and uh, yeah glad, glad we could uh, get this into the agenda today uh, because it's um. You know, something that, that does come up for import reflection and uh, it would be, yeah, um, I, I guess 
what what's the um, impression been so far? Are there any outstanding questions? Or yeah, uh, it'd, be, it'd be interesting to hear what people think. I have to admit, I haven't fully wrapped my head around this yet. So. Yeah, I was just asking about test cases. Uh, I think last meeting you kind of just uh, kind of introduced the problem. Uh, but if there's any, uh, <clears throat> if there's like a gist or anything uh, that kind of tests this or demonstrates it, that'd be great. But otherwise, yeah. I'm, after this meeting, I'd play around with it. And... Yeah, I guess it doesn't include like the example of how you get access to this thing, um, which is that in in the import reflection, you have this import source, um, uh, import source uh, from uh, module specifier, and and so that you get this this object for that represents the the compiled. Um, but uh, not yet uh, instantiated or executed module. And because the import reflection proposal is exposing this for, for WASM, uh, the, the, the Jordan brought up the concern when we were presenting the proposal that um, having a non ECMA 262 host object for, in, for this uh, source reflection spec could be um, a weird thing to do, and also that we wouldn't have a solution for JavaScript. So the, the idea of, of this kind of minimum viable source was like, can we put something together that will be able to fulfill the needs that we have for compartment sources, module sources, while also being minimal enough that it gives us a starting point? Um, it's a shame Chris isn't here at the moment to give feedback on this as well, because um, it would be interesting to hear his opinion. Um, so I guess we kind of have to make the decision now if we are going to include this in the proposal for um, for our stage advancement or or not at this point. And um, yeah, so let, let, me, let, let, let me ask when you say now, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Chris is uh, expected to be returning from paternity leave on April 27th. It's the last okay. day of the record. Oh, right. Um, okay. Yeah, then maybe that'll give us some time to to get that feedback as well, and we can then maybe have it more fleshed out in, as a as a proposal PR at that point. Uh, and that's still, I believe, before the deadline for um, proposal advancement. So that, yeah, that's, that's uh, yeah. So so that's that's my first my first preference is make sure that that Chris states an opinion before um, before anything else. Uh, but uh, other than that, I, I, you know, I'll just give my own reaction, uh, uh, which is this looks like a good direction. Sorry. So I'm, I'm trying to catch up on the conversation here. Um, so this is this is just sitting on top of what we already had for layer zero for module source, or does it introduce a new thing? So yeah, this is basically like a, as I say, like the, the minimum viable module source, everything that we have planned that module source should be able to do, in theory, this can do. So it's not making any kind of decisions that would not be possible to backtrack from, apart from the fact that we would be shipping module source in a very minimal form. And then we could potentially extend it with with new functions or, or methods or, or APIs that are able to work with module source and, and provide the functionality that we fleshed out should should be the, the full set of functionality for module source in future. Um, yeah, so uh, on, on this instancing section, you know, we could be compatible with whatever means of getting access to module source instances um, we want to go with. So, uh, initially it would be kind of moot because you would import this module source for javascript you would have a javascript module source object but you wouldn't be able to do anything with it right now and uh then in future we would be able to add instantiation apis either via an, an instance 
uh, global that, that acts on it, or it could be a method on the module source, or we could even also with this new framing in terms of phases, um, both instances and sources could potentially be importable in a phase model because they still represent different phases of the same thing. Um, so that, that would be the other option. Um, and yeah, we don't need to make those decisions now, potentially. This isn't really like on top of layer zero. It's more like below layer zero. Like whatever ships before between imperfection and layer zero should include this abstract module source. Because then the two proposals will build on top of this. Yeah, yeah, that, I, I get it. I, I, I was asking mostly if there is anything that needs to be added to layer zero for these two functions. But it seems that we we'll, would we'll be fine. Yeah, and then I can follow up on yeah the, the these kind of security discussions that we were having last week. Um, I was able to clarify that CSP. Um, Mark asked the question last week um, with regards to this the CSP gating. Um, you know, if, if you need to have the, the if you've got this getting access to the source and then instantiating the source as these two kind of processes, and which gates would dominate the other and and which ones would be necessary from a security perspective. I was able to like fully clarify that it is particularly the CSP policy is entirely a source gate. It only gates getting access to the thing. Um, and so from this perspective, this was my confusion with the with the WASM unsafe eval is that like unlike unsafe eval, which is like an eval gate, Wasm unsafe eval is actually badly named because it remains a a compilation gate, and I think that's that's the naming confusion that that kind of set me off track on on understanding that. Um, but when you realize that Wasm unsafe eval is closer to like a, a a normal script source CSP policy, which is about like, do you have access to get the the, the thing to to get access to these compiled bytes, and um, as such, transferring a WebAssembly module from one environment to another is not within the CSP policy system because it does not deal with transfer and instantiation. It deals with, do you have access to that thing to begin with? Um, and- uh, clarif quick, quick, yes. Clarifying question. Uh, so you mentioned a CS CSP control on script source. Uh, I'm very ignorant of CSP. Could you could you explain that? Yeah, I think that at, at the end of the day, the security model is very limited, and even the creators of CSP, although those working on the spec, um, tend to see it as you know um, not the not necessarily an ideal security model. Um, <laughs> So, <laughs> uh, so, you know, when trying to get into the CSP mindset, I guess the closest we can get is that like, it's gating access to these um, things and, and script source determines which origins you can, you can get fetch scripts from and run scripts from. Uh, and so, uh, so, so let me clarify. Let me let yeah. me make sure I'm saying. Uh, if CSP says you can't get a source from origin X, or you can't get a source except from origin Y, I don't know if it's right. uh, allow or deny lists. Is it? If, but uh, let me just ask: Is it allow or deny lists? Al allow lists. Good. So if so if um, so if it says you can't get a source other than from origin X. And then you try you so then if you try to do a script source from origin y it'll stop it that makes sense. Mm -hmm. What if you then try to just uh, get it by get the the actual text of the source through uh, an, a, a cross origin XML HTTP request? Right. So um, that, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So the ESM integration. This is the benefit of 
tying the security model to the ESM integration because that ties the execution capability to the fetch capability. Um, whereas, yeah, with, with a standard fetch, in WebAssembly, we only have one gate right now, which is can you compile arbitrary bytes? Like if given a, a, a UN data array of WASM bytes, can you compile it? And so it, it just blanket applies to everything. In JavaScript, you would be looking at something like importing a blob. Uh, so you could create a blob and import it with dynamic import. Or for traditional scripts, it's eval. Um, and both of those are also gated under CSP using the unsafe eval and blob policies, zero policies. And, and all this applies only to more normal IOs where if somehow you can pass through post message, it doesn't apply there because it's yeah. just a screen. Yeah, uh, so that's actually a different policy and that's more um, yeah. uh, the um, uh, same origin checks and um, uh, Chrome actually implements its own behaviors there, which I don't believe are fully specified. Um, so for example, if you have a WebAssembly module and an iframe and they're on the same origin and you post the module across, you'll be able to post it, but that's actually not a security violation because you can access globals on the iframe and pass globals across anyway right. without using post message. Um, so it's only when you've sealed the iframe off that that's a problem. Um, but if you've got like an iframe on a different origin and you can't, um, sorry, M Matthew, uh, you, you look like you have a question. Yeah, yeah, no, I was asking a uh, cross origin. Cross art, yeah. So cross origin iframe. If you try to transfer a WebAssembly module, uh, Chrome will just deny it. So that's actually uh, something that Chrome implemented that isn't actually specified, and they just um, will just not send the message. Interesting. Uh, yeah. So I, I think when we when we look at source modules for JavaScript. The discussion we had last week was that we should seek to follow the WASM precedent. And I think the, that precedent is like that that's what this precedent is, right? So it's a it, transfer is denied by default. And maybe we can more clearly define these kind of things, cr cross origin transfer, at least in Chrome. Um, but uh, I think these are the kind of questions we need to be thinking about as soon as we get access to this object in JS. The initial minimal viable source module would not necessarily be I mean, as an ECMA 262 construct we don't define the transfer semantics so that's more html integration right so once we've got it in some form in the language uh, as a spec we can start to follow up these discussions on the on the html side and start to figure them out further and that's another benefit of having a, a minimal thing that we can then start driving some of those other discussions on. Um, yeah. Does that all make sense? I think, think that's, so. the, yeah, that's the full security argument. So CSP as, as a source gate, source gate is clearly not fully sufficient, um, but, um, you know, when dealing with transfers and, and things, but Chrome kind of just having this, this extra behavior that it implements. And I'm glad we could put the time to figure that out because I didn't know any of this going into this, these questions either. So what about the callable boundary? The, can you um, clarify what you mean by that? Yeah, so the, the shadow realm callable boundary, um, the, uh, it would be, yeah, you will not be able to pass it. Uh, yeah, you might you might be able to pass it if we ever introduce the um, the cloning algo, but we have an advance on that. Okay. The structure clone. Right. I think anything. 
Well, right. Anything um, that we need to go through the callable very that's an object right now wouldn't go through it. We need to figure out a way to do some some kind of cloning support uh, for that. Did the discussion about passing array buffers uh, like had any conclusion? Because for WebAssembly, it will probably be similar. I yeah, I, I I still believe that we shouldn't treat array buffers any more specially than any other object, and that the solution should be a uh, first class cloning uh, support between uh, between the two realms. The main oh, difference between okay. a shadow realm okay. and another agent is that they're synchronous access. But besides that, uh, it's roughly the same. Yeah. the The thing about you know module sources that's the um, you know the the representation, the portable representation of behavior intended to be the portable representation of behavior. That can be passed around between contexts, so um, so it's it's I, I would consider it to be more pressing for that than for uh, shared than for array buffers. You uh, may... And also, just so, just just so nobody's surprised, I'll just say that I'm uh, very uncomfortable with structured clone as a starting point for specifying cloning, although it, on, on investigation it was better than I remembered it as. Uh, but I just, just wanted to, to mention that I'm uncomfortable with structured clone as a precedent for how to do cloning. So nobody's surprised later when I object. Is yeah, I'm not, I'm not advocating for structured clone uh, for Shadow Realms, but uh, something like it, but extensible. Yeah, well, I think that uh, to keep in mind, though, is that you should be able to fetch the the Watson source again from within the realm, and you're going to get it from cache. But you need to know how to get it. Right. I, I'm, I'm also wondering, like, if we have module expressions, and in particular, module declarations, uh, but at the very least, module uh, expressions, it should be possible to do a shadow realm dot import value or something like that uh, of a module expression that then passes along uh, that in, that basically does the import the same imports and they they end up resolving to. Uh, to the same modules and or module sources because they are in the same agents and they share the same uh, import books, right? You need to like clone the module because otherwise you, like, you cannot import the same module from two sides of the callable boundary. You can you can have a a module can have a unique representation within every agent. Sorry, I might or, be confusing the word agent. Yeah. Realm in this case. Within yeah, within the every realm realm. Yeah. Because we talk about this concept of phase of a module. You can think of that module as potentially having cross-realm uniqueness. Um in the sense that like um a cr cross realm uniqueness could be worked out, but so I think I think this the, the issue about what phase you're in the 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 whether whether the thing itself is cross realm meaningful very much depends on the phase in the source phase, um, uh, where it's completely unlinked and um, and completely context free only has information derived from the actual source text that one's clearly. Uh, has portable meaning. Uh, once it's 
linked, and especially once it's instantiated, then obviously it does not have cross realming. I, I'm not sure I understand the identity part. Like no matter what, in two different realms, it's if it's a JavaScript object, it's going to have it's going to be two different oh. JavaScript objects, right? Right. The, the JavaScript object has it has to be a different object. So in that sense. Uh, you have to, to clone it to get a new object identity that inherits from the object prototype of the of the new right. realm and all of that. Um, but the but the but the but the meaning of the object, if it's a source object, the meaning can be preserved across yes. the clone. If it's a linked object or an instantiated object, then obviously it cannot. And I would say that such a thing just should not be clonable. Yes, but a so a module expression gives you a module source, right? Well, so that's actually a very interesting question, which is, I think with you know Guy's reflection proposal uh, with this nice uniform way to name the phase that you're trying to import into, you know, you're trying to import as of, uh, I'm wondering, uh, uh, you know, when we discuss module expressions, uh, we got ourselves tied up into a knot about um, what phase is the, the value of the expression. Uh, for a long time, we all agreed that it should be a source, module source object, uh, which I, is certainly the one that I, that I want, um, but uh, the, there was some amount of context that uh, people wanted to uh, remember as part of the value of the expression. Um, and I'm wondering now, could we apply exactly the same pseudo keywords as from Guy's import reflection proposal uh, to, the to the module expression uh, in order to determine what phase the value of the expression is in? Okay, so if you do a module, expression it gets linked, but if you do a module source expression, it's just source that doesn't get linked. Yeah. Does that seem possible? Uh, Nicola, do you have any opinions on this? I think- Yeah, like, yeah. like this was a bit brought up in the past, like the main like, problem that's like very hard to justify because like we, like after all the, this proposal, we will have a clear use case for just module sources, like module source expressions. Like right now, there is no like there is no use case. So like it it definitely makes sense. Uh, like module source expressions going to ship after like many of these other proposals are like move move forward with, like in the in the process. But but just independent of whether it's perceived as well motivated or not just technically uh could we use just the same set of pseudo keywords yes. for naming a phase on the source expression yes okay that's very like, attractive. there were yeah like there are some like examples when using like uh like module that actually like, uh, so the, the original keyword for imperfection was module like import module and that was for getting module instances and that was nice because it aligned with the module keyword of import expressions. And when the proposals, which when the import reflections, which the source, like we like we we didn't really consider as part of the proposal, but like we're talking about mod using module source as like two keywords, and then the contents. But like yes, yeah, like it it fits. Okay, I think that's great. Can someone explain this a little bit more? I, I didn't, I didn't get it. Uh, so, I, if you look back at the slides that we presented, um, uh, I don't know if you have a link to that, uh, Nicola. I can see if I can find it from uh, the last meeting. But basically, when we presented the phases, that there were two phases that fell under the import reflection proposal, and and that was. Um, both source and instance and so we we very much were able to map these terms directly onto the terms that we're using so that we don't actually we don't have a conflation of, of terminology here we, we are using terms that are consistent between proposals 
And um, yeah, so I think that's definitely something that's worth clarifying. But I, I've got the the slides here. I'll just post it in the chat. Um, oh, you've got it already. Cool. Uh, yeah, so we have import source, which is what we're um, specifying for import reflection as the, the, the main proposal. And then in theory, we could also have an import uh, instance or import module, I think it's still called in the slides, that, that 12 instance, yeah, import instance. You could have an import instance that would give you the, the instance record that corresponds to the, the, the exact linkage and um, a host to, you know, the, with, with all the, the host hooks applied. Um, so for the import reflection proposal, that would very much fall into this phase um, construction that you could have this this source phase, then this instance phase, um, and then you know starting from the first phase being the sort of resource phase, and then the final phase being the um, the, the the completely evaluated module. Um, and uh, but what we are specifying in import reflection is restricted to this minimal viable source. So initially we weren't going to even do the source, um, but it looks like we're being pushed in that direction a little bit here to at least specify the source reflection. And in future, um, other reflections could be defined. Um, so that that's that's this kind of idea of like a layer, uh, like if, if this proposal is able to go forward and, and, you know, if it ends up that this proposal can go forward before say module expressions, like that that can also be something that like, can form a shared foundation so that when we think about instancing for module expressions, we're we're building on on this on the similar foundation um, uh, that 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 fits into the same phasing model. Um, so, yeah, and and so for transfer to another realm, uh, whether it's another agent or in uh, in a shadow realm, which phase makes sense to uh, share? I, I know we talked about like. Like the, the phase that has the import hook, you can't send the import hook to a different agent for sure. So um, so that restrict that, but I'm, I'm still unclear. That would be the source phase then? Yeah, so the source phase, so webassembly.module is a, is a module source, which is already transferable today. Um, and so JS module sources would also, should also be transferable in the same vein. Um, the, uh, the, the, the specification of that transfer for JS modules is something that is enabled once we will, like once we have a spec for it. Um, it won't be useful though, because there will be no way to import JS sources. So it's the the missing piece will still be the importability and, and instantiability of these things. So that's what we still need to figure out. And, and that's a cross proposal discussion. And that's part of these kind of discussions that we need to have. But um right. yeah. Let, 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 me, let me make sure I understand something. The um the sort the the fetch the result of the fetch compile does not um capture any import hooks. It's just information derived from the sources per se. Um, the capturing of import hooks, I was reading this slide as that would be something that uh, would happen in the attach evaluation context, but I'm actually, uh, I'm, I'm not, I want to yes, uh, to to verify fair. that. Yeah, that's okay. Fair. Okay, so, so, the, so, what, so with the import hooks attached, you have something that is no longer portable, should no longer be portable, and therefore should no longer be clonable. Unless the result of those hooks is itself transferable. Uh, I mean, the, the, the problem is that it's the hooks, they mean the hooks themselves are, be, are active behavior. It's not, so when you say the result of the hooks, the, the, the hooks themselves do something as a result of using the artifact. It's like the, 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 like the hooks have all run and you have a linked thing at the end of the link phase. Uh, but in the end of the attach evaluation context phase, you have something whose behavior is defined in terms of 
what the hooks will do when invoked. So like this step like should actually be called attach evaluation and resolution context. And like resol resolution context can be defined in multiple ways. And one way is like to JavaScript land import hooks. Like other ways that resolution context could be attached is like at, at the host level. And that is, for example, transferable and that's usable to like transfer it. Uh, I mean, for JavaScript land, we could define our uh, import hooks as a module source and some uh, clonable data. Yeah. That would be transferable. <laughs> uh, I'm confused, but I think I will postpone the confusion. And that, that concept of transferable linkage is something that we've discussed before, but um, and and has hit issues with obviously the input hook um, non transferability. But um, in theory, if we do have unique identity across realms, the concept of linkage has transferability. So that that's the 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 requirement for linkage transferability is unique identity across realms of module sources. Unique um, or stable. And uh, yeah, I guess the the instance uniqueness is more difficult because instance uniqueness is requires um, instance uniqueness is tied to the resolution context. It's more stable so that if you transfer uh, if you transfer back and forth, uh, you end up with the same object identity, right? Right. But but if it is going to enable use cases where that is needed, like so, so maybe maybe we don't need that property. Right now with WebAssembly.module, it'll just make multiple in uh, identities when you transfer them. I don't understand why this is necessary for having meaningful transfer linked modules. It isn't. It's just okay. a, another feature that could might be worth discussing. I don't know. Um, yeah. It, it, you, you do have the, like, there, there is this usability thing, which I guess to, to kind of bring it down to the, the point is like, with module expressions as a user, I should expect that I can write code that looks like it's running in my current realm, but I can transfer it to another realm and it'll run there. Um, but if I have imports that rely on import maps, they are just not going to work. So I will write code that uses an import map. I'll transfer this expression over. And because the import map isn't in that worker, it's not going to be importable and I'm going to get an error. Um, the, the import map could be like referenced by the module, like it could be preserved across transfers. Right. So that's where we get to the question of resolution yeah, the, uniqueness across realms. Yeah, I think I think the the thing that makes the module source so attractive as something to transfer is it's pure. It has no IO connections. It's just in it's just information that describes behavior with um, uh, that still needs a context. Uh, anything that drags a context with it, I think I'm much more suspicious that that's something that should be considered transferable. Yeah, but the, the ergonomics from developers' point of view uh, is that, I, I mean, as a developer, as, as Guy mentioned, like you just want to be able to send your source and assume it's going to work. The, like, even if this... Like, you know, if the service doesn't capture the context in order to be able to use it in the other realm, you also need to transfer this context manually and then re re like reconnect the source with the context on the other side. You cannot just ignore the context because then all the- so, Okay, so you, the con I mean, the, the context we're talking about is the behavior of the import hooks, correct? Yeah.
but again, like not all the import hooks are JavaScript functions because the main problem is JavaScript, like JavaScript functions cannot be transferred. Yeah. So like import hooks can also be other abstraction labels. The, So with with import maps in browsers currently, so uh, you know obviously other environments are different. Um, like in Node.js, if you do an import in a worker, you're going to have the same resolution as an import in the main thread because they're both going to have access to the same node modules lookup. But in the browser, they specifically made the decision not to share the import map with the worker. So you have the import map on the main page, which represents a set of bare specifier mappings. And that is a, a static map that is not dynamically amendable. And it is a synchronous resolution. Um, and uh, it, it, it is set during an initial waiting for import maps phase. And then once you do your first one, well, the first time you load in a JavaScript module, in that, in that page, the import map context changes from a waiting for import maps to a, you know, import maps ready, and the, the import map gets locked. Uh, and at this point, you cannot load any new import maps. The mappings you have are the mappings you have for the uh, continuation of the execution. And okay. those mappings only apply in the, the main realm. Uh, if you create a worker, if you um, have an iframe or whatever, the, the okay. mappings are not gonna care. So, so part of my discomfort with the entire direction of this conversation is it's treating the host as too magical. Uh, to, to my mind, import maps are something you emulate by writing import hooks in JavaScript. The you know the the part of the you know the starting from from you know going back to ECMAScript five, one of the things we've been trying to do is reduce the degree to which the host has magic powers that cannot be emulated in JavaScript. And so um, I, th I think that the conversation needs to not be starting with import maps. It needs to be starting with import hooks written in JavaScript. Yeah, so I think the, you know, in terms of from a primitive point of view, from, from a pure like um, enabling primitive point of view, I think that the, the source transfer is the more general case because you're dealing with something that enables the, the compartments use cases um and and i i can if chris will be back soon it would be great to check that off with him but potentially that that could unblock a lot of that work that could allow the custom js hooks but then for the module expressions proposal that is a top of mind consideration because of the fact that it is an ergonomic proposal designed for certain you know, the initial use case being making it easier for users to write threaded code in JavaScript. Like transferring or like cloning to another realm to another worker is also magic host behavior. Like if you implement import maps, import maps on top of your, uh, on top of JavaScript function, like JavaScript hooks, uh, you could preserve the behavior, but also by also like virtualizing what Structure cloning to another worker means because you when you want to structure cloning, you have to unpack well, your model and get the context and the source, send them back and repack them and then start. So like it can build, it can still work, except that if you want to virtualize like import maps, you would also have to virtualize how cloning works when import maps are like are involved. Right, I guess it's really a cross-agent concern because a single agent, even if it has multiple realms with shadow realms, will have the same uh, default import hook uh, behavior. There's the default with compartments. You can have there the you know each compartment has can have its own set of import hooks. I'm not sure why default default import hooks is a particularly relevant issue here. Well, I, I guess it becomes a question on how do you create a compartment with a different uh, import hook or compartment or shadow realm? Like we don't have compartment in, uh, uh, in, in, 
in the spec today, we don't have evaluators. So yeah, this, um, is, this is this is why it's so important for an epic to be something that's that's you know that's taken account of in our overall process of things go forward, so we don't paint ourselves into a corner. But um, in compart with compartment compartments is in particular something that we need to make sure that the corner where we would be painting ourselves into does not exclude them. That it's part of the epic we need to 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 keep viable. But I think for compartments, the solution there is evaluators. Um, one interesting point to consider is uh, shadow realm. Uh, how do you create a shadow realm with a different uh, import hook, uh, default import hook? And, or should you be able to do that? Um, There's also yeah. this question of like implicit or explicit because, um, you know, with the current evaluators um, and, and loader hook um, constructions, you can basically, you can build out a loader. We, we've got like build your own loader and you can achieve, you know, if you want to um, instrument a shadow realm, with these evaluators, you can you can build your own loader inside of that realm and 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 pass things to it. And um, sources as a primitive would be something that it operates on, so that you could have sources be transferred sources or sources that are obtained in whatever by whatever means. Um, but from a loader perspective, the resolution can be managed in 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 whatever way is uh, virtualizing import maps within that that loader. Um, but the 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 default hooks is always a different discussion there because that gets down to like the the fact that you're using the existing browsers like the, the because of the fact that the browser can't load without having a loader so it has this default loader and and those um, semantics can't be ignored as well. And I guess for Shadow Realm, the thing that needs to be answered is how do you get a module source across the boundary? Uh, and maybe, uh, and that goes back most likely to the same question of how how do you import, how do you instantiate a uh, a module source? Uh, if we have dynamic import being able to instantiate a module source, then it would make sense to have shadow realm dot imports being able to instantiate a module source inside the realm. Yeah. So on the, on the first question that you asked before, I don't think that is, that is a goal of shadow realm. Uh, having a, a hook a, or modifying the global hook is not a responsibility of that but the compartment API to do full virtualization. Right. On the second, I don't know. Well, I mean, we clearly need to figure out how to transfer those. I, it's To me, it sounds like In the case of Shadow Realm, transferring by knowing by figuring out how to instantiate a module source is sufficient. Uh, if you can just do Shadow Realm import of a module source and that it import itself references uh, uh, other module source that can be then hooked into whatever is running inside Shadow Realm already, uh, you can bootstrap things that way. I think the the module source is By not data. module. So it, it, if it's the result of an import, um, you would be getting like the instance out of it or something. Um, so that would be losing access to the original module source, I think. Uh, so you might still want an explicit transfer dynamic potentially. Yeah, you would lose access to the original module source, but that module source that you're importing can itself import source to get, uh, and those import source are the one that you would be uh, virtualizing the import of. If you have a handle to what you're importing from, and because you always have to import from a string specifier, um, Um, and unless we have declarations, in which case you could possibly import module sources, right? So. Yeah, unless you have declarations, yeah. 
So yeah. in theory, um, uh, yeah, sorry, we're at time. All right. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's after eleven, and uh, there is something I would like to mention after we stop recording. So don't 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 everybody disappear immediately when we stop recording. All right. Well, I suppose that's as good of a time. Uh, thanks, everyone.